Sells, Arizona is only 60 miles from Tucson, but it's part of a different world. This is the desert where the Tohono O'odham have lived for generations. For Richard Pablo, it's a land of memories and glass. When I was growing up, a lot of people used to go out to the dances and they'd get beer, and it just seemed like fun. We'd jump on the road and hitchhike to those dances. It was something to do. It didn't seem really that bad. Richard thinks as he gathers glass. The desert holds thousands of bottles, left behind over decades as drinkers finished their alcohol and moved on. Some things we take in and we think that they're cool to do or all right or they give us a good feeling. And pretty soon before you know it, it's, it's ingrained in us. And the next thing you know, it takes over us. And a lot of people may have had dreams, hopes of doing things and maybe it really crushed them. When you have groups of people that have uh, ex experienced uh, cumulative trauma, that this trauma then is uh, transmitted from generation to generation if left unresolved. Edward Grijalva, a counselor and tribal liaison with Pascua Yaqui and Tohono O'odham roots, says that cumulative or historical trauma grew from the violence, displacement, and forced assimilation Native American communities endured. Now it lives on, he says, in cycles of abuse and addiction. It's a soothing mechanism where people are looking for some sort of relief, although people don't uh, necessarily go to the liquor store and say, I'm, I'm experiencing trauma, can you, so I'm buying a six pack. But if, if generations before them were doing the same thing, then they seem to think that it's okay. So I grew up with just alcoholism, some of the alcoholism at home. I didn't have a father. As I grew up, I didn't have really nobody. It turned really ugly after a while. After a while, it's almost dependent. You get dependent on it, and after a while, you're following for myself anyway, so I was lost in it. One day, we were going to Phoenix. I was working for the district, and we are going to Phoenix, and I all of a sudden, butterflies were flowing through my body, and I didn't know what it was, and I had a stroke. Soon after that, I, they released me. <clears throat> Some of my family members came up and picked me up, but not even probably on a Wednesday. And by that Friday, I was out drinking and doing coke again. Nobody could stop me. And I didn't want to die with everybody feeling that way. Richard found a way to start over and soon enrolled in Tohono O'odham Community College. That's where he met environmental scientist David Stone. I was making some adobe blocks and he came up and said, hey, I heard you were working on something interesting. Uh, I'd like to find out about this. And so we began to talk. David was working on this, cement that's made from glass. It's a discovery he made by accident. To keep iron from rusting in his lab, he had mixed it with water and silica, the main ingredient in glass. He got a reaction he didn't expect. It hissed. It steamed, it spat, it got hot, and I threw it away. I thought, well, that didn't work. The next day when I came in, the maintenance guys had not taken the garbage away, and I looked in and I found that the chunks of this stuff had gotten very hard. David received funding from the Environmental Protection Agency to bring his project to cells. We actually thought we were going to have to go to, to Tucson, or even the Phoenix, and bring in glass from these outside cities just to demonstrate the process. 
And when Richard heard about this, he said, wait a minute, I'll show you glass. Richard led him to all the drinking sites he knew, and the gathering began. The bottles are crushed into sand-sized and gravel-sized pieces, then combined with steel dust, water, and carbon dioxide. They react, and the iron rusts, creating a stone-like material. It's been used for several construction projects on the reservation, including a patio at the Tohono Autumn Nation Cultural Center and Museum. There used to be a big billboard, and it showed pictures of three autumn women. And the words on the billboard were, we have been in this desert for 500 years. Are we going to be here in another 500 years? I think so. The rest of the world might fall, but I think so. Four years after their friendship began, David and Richard are hoping their project has a future. The EPA funding is now gone, but they have proposed that the Tohono Autumn Nation continue making the cement as a commercial venture, a chance to create jobs and help the autumn build better lives. I had never heard the terms intergenerational trauma or historical grief. And when I did come out, I not only heard those terms, but I saw what they meant. Richard, uh, very early on, told me as we were driving away from a bottle collection site. He kind of looked at me and laughed in the way he does and says, you know, David, you are interested in recycling broken glass. I'm interested in recycling broken dreams. That's what I'm doing here. In his gathering and thinking, Richard has found a flickering hope. We can get tied up in a lot of things if we if we let them, but if you untie those knots, there's more things to let in, and it becomes more beautiful, and somehow it unfolds itself, and it makes more room, and, there, and it's, the fire gets bigger. <laughs> 